Hey there, and welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I just want to thank you so much for coming and spending your time with me today. If you enjoy my content, hit the like button. And hey, subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you as part of my family. This week, I have some amazing DIYs that were really cheap to make, and they're going to be for resale. But first... <laughs> I want you to also join me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. The links will be in the description box. On the first one, all I have is a piece of board. It's about half an inch thick and it's a foot long. I'm going to use pumpkin spice, which is a color by Dixie Belle. And I gave this two full coats on all the corners and all the sides. And by the way, this was just a spare piece of wood that I had in my garage. You can take old pieces of wood and make something beautiful out of them. I ordered the sunflower transfers off of Amazon. They're Prima Redesign, and they're in my Amazon store if you want to get some. And I just cut one of the pieces off that I really liked. And I'm just going to place this on my piece of wood. I kind of placed it a little more to the right side because there was a cut in the wood. And we're just trying to cover that up a little bit. If you've never used a transfer, all you do is you lay it down. It's like a sticker almost. Except for they send you this little tool, which is that wooden stick in my hand. And you just rub until the transfer comes off. And then you use that film that it was on and rub it across the top. It, that's called burnishing. And that just helps that transfer really adhere to whatever you're putting it on. I also added a little leaf up in the corner. I've got my IOD type setter stamps. And I absolutely love these. I use them a lot. And I'm just going to put the word fall here. I had to go back and put the second L because you only get one letter in each set. Then I'm going to use the Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in the color Tobacco Road. And I just kind of went around the sides. I put it on a rag and I kind of went around the sides and very lightly and just here and there on the front. Now this is just like the Waverly Antique Wax except for it's more of a gel. I have the end of a curtain rod here, and I cut it off with my little table saw that I got a few weeks ago, and I absolutely love that table saw. It's so handy, and I just cut it straight across to where I could put it on top and make that the stem of the pumpkin, and I used my Starbond glue and accelerator to hold it down because that stuff is amazing, and it is a permanent stick within 15 seconds. I got a piece of jute rope and I started in the back with a little bit of hot glue and I placed it down at the very bottom of that little finial just so I can cover up where it goes together on the, the piece of wood there. I wrapped it around maybe five or six times and then I just glued it back off and then cut the excess off. Then I used a lighter to burn off any fuzzies that might be on that jute rope. Then I took two leaves that came from the lamb's ear from Walmart and I glued one on each side of the stem of the pumpkin. Now, if you know me, you know I love to make simple bows and I make what you call the cause bow. You make a loop in the shape of a cause ribbon and then you just kind of squish it all down in the middle and you tie your jute twine right in the center and voila, you got yourself a super easy bow. It's really easy to maneuver and manipulate the little tails if you need to, you know, make them straighter or whatever. And like I said, I just tied it with my jute twine and then I'm going to dovetail the ends. And then I'm just going to hot glue it right in front of where I put my stem. And then for the last step, I'm going to take some of the Spanish moss that I got from a tree in Florida, put a little bit of hot glue up on the very kind of top toward the back, 
and you just use however much you like and you stick your Spanish moss on there. And I just kind of trimmed off little pieces that were kind of flying away everywhere. And that's all I did to this one. I hope you like it. On this next one, I'm going to teach you to make soap in the easiest way you can imagine. At Hobby Lobby, they have these little, I guess you call it a kit. It's the actual soap itself, and I got the olive oil soap. They also have goat's milk, almond, all kinds. It comes out in a square like this. It almost looks like ice cubes. Very easy to cut, and I'm just going to take this big old knife I got, and you just cut it. It's very easy to cut because it's already scored for you. And I'm doing this one-handed so I can show you with the camera because I was having to hold the camera. But see how easy this is? You just cut it where it's scored. And then you're going to cut each little square. And when you get finished, it's going to look like actual ice cubes is kind of what it reminds me of. Then you just take a microwave safe cup. I think this one is so cute. It came from Campbell Soup. It's actually collectors. It's very old. You put a bunch of your little cubes in there. I probably put about eight of them. I just filled it up and you pop it in the microwave. The first time you pop it in there, you go 30 seconds and then you stir it a little. And if that's not enough, you do 10 second intervals until it's done. And when it's finished, it's just going to be runny just like this. Very easy. And Hobby Lobby also sells your colors. I have several different colors here that we're going to use and make sure that they say that it's for soap. And then I'm going to use some different types of fragrances. I've got lavender, the other was fruit slices, eucalyptus mint, and then there's several that are fruity scents like strawberries and cream, black raspberry vanilla, and wild cherry. The first one that I'm going to make is going to be a pumpkin spice scent. Now that fruit slices smells just like pumpkin spice to me. It's got that cinnamony, pumpkiny smell. So the color that I want is going to be kind of a orangey, ready kind of color. It doesn't have to be exact, and you can make it as dark or light as you want, or you don't even have to use color. I used about four drops of the red here, and then you give it a good stir every time just to make sure it's all evened out and, you know, being distributed correctly. So I didn't feel that that was enough, and I added a couple more drops of the red. Now I'm going to add a couple of drops of the yellow whenever I finish getting this one stirred. I take my yellow and I put roughly, possibly 15 drops in there, and then I stirred it really good, and it still wasn't the color that I was wanting. So I actually added just a little bit of the red and then I stirred it around and it looked like the color that I was wanting. I take the scent fruit slices and I'm just going to pour a little bit in here. It's best to start off small. You can always add, but you can't take away. So it's best to start off kind of small and smell it. And you don't even have to put fragrance on these. You can just do the olive oil soap. It's very nourishing and it's very soft and it just feels so good on your body. And I just really like the smells. That's kind of my thing is the smells. So I probably used just a, I don't know, about a fourth of the bottle actually. And this is enough in this cup 
to fill up three of my little soap molds. I started out just using my spoon because I didn't want to get it everywhere. I was afraid if I tried to pour it, it was going to go everywhere. And everything that I got, I purchased at Hobby Lobby. The soap mold, the scents, the color, the soap itself, everything is at Hobby Lobby, and it's all on the same aisle. So, I just used my spoon until I got to the top. And then on the second one, I got a little bit more courage and poured it, which it was so much easier. And it didn't spill or splash or run down the side of my cup. And like I said, this made enough for three bars of soap. For each scent, I used a different cup. So I did that whole process again where I went and made the little cubes and melted them down. And here we've got it melted down once again. Now we're going to make lavender because lavender is my biggest seller. Everybody loves the lavender smell and it's amazing. So we're going to do roughly the same process. I take my lavender smell, get it ready. And the purple that I used for the lavender is more like a gel. And I didn't realize that when I first put it in. So I put a little bit more than what I wanted. I like to just use a just about two little drops of the purple to give it a very light purpley color. But that's okay because I'm not particular. And then with the scent, I use about a fourth of that little bottle because I like it to be so strong it will knock your socks off. And so the first time that I put my soap in here, or my first little mold, I used my spoon, and then after that, I poured the other two just like I did the first time around. Now, you leave the soap alone for roughly 40 minutes, and then you are ready to pop it right out of that mold after 40 minutes. But I'll let it sit overnight just to make sure. Now, since mine is for resale, I wrap it up so it's really pretty, and this is what you got. I like to wrap mine. I'm going to show you a few different ways you can wrap it to sell it. I like to wrap mine in coffee filters. I usually use one to two coffee filters, and look how easy these molds are. It pops right out. It's got that beautiful design on the bottom there because that mold was had a design on it. And all I'm going to do is just take it and lay it down kind of in the center of my little coffee filter. And we're going to wrap it roughly the same way that you wrap a Christmas present. You just wrap it around. And then you fold over the sides. And I'm going to use some tape to secure every part that I fold. It really doesn't take much. You just put one to two pieces of tape there just to secure what you've got. And then I fold the ends down just like you do a Christmas present. Very easy. Now on this one, I'm going to use some cardstock. I used a thick cardstock, which I wish I wouldn't have. The very thinner, cheaper ones are so much easier to do. This cardstock was thick, and it was kind of hard to wrap good. So I did it in that triangle formation and just kind of wrapped it around, and I used my tape the whole time. I cut down the ends because they were way too long. And once again, you do just like a Christmas present, and you wrap it up so perfectly. Now, another problem with this thicker cardstock is it makes the soap harder to smell most people, I think, that's what they're buying it for because it smells good. So, it's really better to have something where that person can pick it up. The first thing they do is smell it. If they can't smell it, they're going to assume that it's not that great. So, I had some fall stickers, and this come in a fall packet of cardstock, stickers, pictures, all kinds of stuff, and it was from Amazon. It's in my Amazon store under the cardstock section. So I picked this little cute bicycle picture that says, Hello, Fall, and I stuck it on there just so that my customer knows that this is a fall scent. 
I have some stickers made with my emblem on it and my picture, and it looks just like my business card here, but for whatever reason, I could not find my stickers this day. So I'm just gonna take one of my business cards and put it right on the back. That's the part where we have all the tape. And so it's too, you know, we're covering that up, plus letting them know who I am and how to get to my channel. And I just taped it down. And that's the first way to wrap the soap. The second one, I picked a cardstock that was super thin and it was so much easier. And I'm not going to use the coffee filter on this one. But if you'll notice, I use fall colored cardstock also because the color, the smell, the packaging it's in, everything matters if you're reselling it. So on this one, I just set it right in the center. I'm going to wrap it just like a Christmas present the exact same way I did the first one. Super easy, no problem. On this one, I used the sticker again. This one was a little pumpkin and the word autumn. That way they know it's a fall scent. And I just wrote on the one side that it's pumpkin spice nourishing olive oil soap. Now, the last way that I'm going to show you to wrap it is actually my favorite way because you can smell it so much easier, and I think, you know, that it, it sells just as well as wrapping it in the cardstock. So we're going to take a, one of the pieces of our lavender soap out, and I'm just going to wrap it up in this coffee filter. Usually, I use two coffee filters for this, and I'm going to proceed to wrap it the exact same way that I wrapped the others. I just put the tape down, now, the difference on this one is that I don't wrap it in the cardstock when I'm finished. I just cut a piece of cardstock that fits the top. On one side, of course, I put my card or usually my sticker. And then on the other side, I take a corresponding color of cardstock that looks right with the smell of the soap. This one was purple and gray, so it went with the lavender theme. And I just wrote that it's lovely lavender nourishing olive oil soap. And I think that it makes a pretty display, and I think people appreciate the fact that they can smell it. Then I love to take my little stamps that says God is love, and I have several that have different scriptures on it. I love to give just that little tidbit of encouragement anywhere that I can and spread the good news. So that just says God is love, and it has a Bible verse on it. And I, for the lavender, I'm using my purple color ink. And then I'm going to use a different color ink, which I think I used black for the pumpkin spice. And then I'm also using one of my favorite ones that says, You are inscribed in the palm of his hand. That's Isaiah 49, 16 and I display them in a cute little basket in my store. I do carry many other scents, but I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make your own soap in a lazy kind of way. <laughs> hey, if you are enjoying this content so far and you're getting some use out of it, I would love for you to hit that like button because it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and gets me out there so other people can see me who haven't saw my channel before. Also, hit that subscribe button and that bell beside it and YouTube will let you know every time that I put out a video. I would love to have you in our family. Come on and be a part of the family that's the best on YouTube. So the next one, I'm going to use this color Merlot, and it is Dixie Belle's fall color from last year. I got it at a yard sale, actually, for half off because it didn't sell, apparently, last year. And I've got this gorgeous cutting slash breadboard that I paid $1 for at a yard sale. It's brand new. And so I'm going to give it two coats of this gorgeous color Merlot. Merlot. 
once it totally dried, I took my IOD book called Brocant. I've had this for quite a while and I have never used the transfers that's got the chickens on it. I can't believe that. So it's time to pull it out and use it. I just cut out those two flies that's down on the bottom because I don't want those on there with my chickens. Now, if you guys need some IOD supplies, and there's many other supplies that Miss Lori at Milton's Daughter carries. She has paint. She has like decoupage papers. She has different kinds of crackle. She has anything that you need that's paint related. And she carries DIY paint, which I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been using this Dixie Belle, but only because I found it at half off. Now, I did notice when using this Dixie Bell that I get clumps, like small little clumps of paint when I was doing an armoire, and I don't like that because you have to go back out and flick that little piece off, and then you have to repaint it. So, I have to say, in all honesty, the DIY paint is my favorite paint. It's clay-based. It's not a chalk paint. And that's another difference between it and Dixie Belle. The colors are similar. Both have beautiful colors. But I'm just going to let you know that IOD, to me, is a much better paint. And by the way, if you do go to Milton's Daughter, Lori gives all of my subscribers 10% off when you use the code CRAFTYCATHY10. And I'll leave all this down in the link below so that you don't have any problems getting to her. Now back to the DIY. This is another transfer, and you do it the same way as the first one that we did. You just lay it down on that film that it's on, and you use that special tool that they send with it, and you just rub it on there. And then when you're finished, you're going to burnish it, and that just means rub that sheet, that film, over the top, and it just helps it adhere a little better. Now I'm simply going to take some jute twine. I'm going to run that through the top. And I'm just going to put a couple of knots in there. And that's all I'm going to do to this DIY. Super simple and easy. And I always burn off the fuzzies. I love this one. I hope you guys like it. Now for the last DIY, we're going to try out this new shirt press that I got from HTV Ront. I am so excited about this. This is super nice. And I have a shirt here. It's a baseball shirt. And it is 95% polyester. We're going to do sublimation. You know that's my thing. And I have a sublimation printer in case you are new to my channel. And I show you how to do the sublimation. But I also sell the prints in my Etsy store in case you're interested. And I'll leave the link to my Etsy store down below so you can go and look. Sublimation is super easy. All you need is a form of heat, like the heat press or this shirt press. Either one will work. I'm just straightening up my shirt because I need to just do a quick little iron to get out any kind of wrinkles. Since I've had a couple of back surgeries, my husband wasn't around to help me get this shirt press out of the garage so i had to do a makeshift little quick deal here so excuse me for the bad lighting and that the fact that it's sitting on a cooler now you just press the start button which is on the left and then you're going to put what temperature you want it on and when it heats up to the temperature and it's ready it's going to turn from red to green and then you put how many seconds you want on there, if you want automatic or if you want a mode. It has modes. It's already set with time and temperature set. 
you just press it in and as you saw when you push the button the top goes down automatically and it is just ironing the shirt right now to get any wrinkles out when it was finished ironing it you see it just goes up by itself and then you pull the little slider out and look how perfectly ironed the shirt is it's ready to go i have this gorgeous svg that says pumpkin spice and jesus christ i absolutely love this i mean what a better way to spread the word you know and I really just eyeball how far down from the collar it is. I usually go about, I don't know, six inches from the collar. And I don't know for sure if you have to cover this with the wax paper. I'm just so used to doing it. And I don't want to mess up that iron, you know, the top up there when it comes down. Because I don't want to sublimate on it and mess it up. You just push in until you feel a little like snap. And that's how you know it's in there. It's already preset to 375 for 60 seconds. And I just pushed the button and the machine did all the rest of the work for me. When it completed the 60 minute cycle, it just opened up by itself as you see. And I pull the little drawer out. And sublimation is a gas process. You don't have to wait till it dries or anything. It's already dry and absolutely ready to go. Now, every time I pull the top off and look, oh, I get so excited. Look at that. You can't get any prettier than that. I absolutely love this shirt. I just want to say that if you stuck with me through this whole video, Thank you so much for coming and spending your time with me today. I love each and every one of y'all. I hope you like this video. And don't forget that on Tuesdays and Fridays at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time is when my videos are out. And hey, I just joined TikTok and I will leave all the information below. Love y'all.